Crime, Wine, and Chaos contains adult language and graphic content. Listener discretion is advised. We're all going to make it, Chaos Kids. I'm Naomi. I'm Amber, and this is Crime, Wine, and Chaos. We are going to make it. We're going to make it. Everything's going to be all right. Hey, sister. It's gonna be it's gonna all be right. all right. Yeah, <laughs> it's true though. Oh my goodness. Hi. Oh, hi. How are hi. you? I am doing all right. Okay. How I are mean, you? I'll take it. I'll take okay. it. Okay. You I've know been what? Better. I've been better. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I've been better. It's all right. Um. You know, it's been a rough week. It's been a rough week. And I'm really happy to see your face and uh, that's so nice with you. I'm happy yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on with we, you? Well, not a whole lot. I um, found out today that we have a gig. Oh, this will cut that. This will be released after that. Nobody cares. It Never mind. <laughs> Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. Oh my God. <laughs> God. Jesus, we're oh, in a ray of sunshine oh, over yeah. here today. <laughs> oh man. Thanks for noticing me. Oh my, I'll just have some thistle. Oh my gosh. Wow. Are you drinking? Was... What are you drinking? You know what? I'm not. I've just got my water here because I have a little bit of a sore throat and congestion going on. I don't feel super great, but. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sister. It's all right. It's all right. So you've got, we've got kind of a special, this is another like weird, special crime, wine and chaos because we have an update. We do have an update. To a case that Amber covered previously. Uh, I'm sure you have it in your notes when we covered it. Uh, it was episode semi- 160. Yeah. Episode 160, semi local to us. This was something that happened in Yakima on the other side of the mountains from us. And Amber had a family member of the victim in that story reach out and want to give us more information. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, let Amber take the reins here and tell us everything, Amber. Okay. Well, this is uh, regarding the missing case of Larry Regal. And I had the privilege of talking to Larry's sister, Susan, Larry called her Susie, which is adorable. And I talked to Susan on the phone for an hour and a half. Wow. She is lovely. I feel like I know Larry a little bit better and we didn't get anything wrong. So that's great news, but she just offered a, (laughs) a lot more details and really got to tell me about her childhood with Larry and just what a phenomenal brother he was. So I'm going to, I know, I know. I just reminds me of us just shenanigans, you know, (laughs) just shenanigans. And I can't imagine having one of your pack just missing, you know? Yeah. No, I literally cannot imagine. I cannot. I I cannot. I would be broken. I mean, that would break me. That would be something that would break me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let me tell you about Susan and her family and well, Larry and Susan and their family. So they have a super large tight knit family. She has 64 first cousins in the Yakima area. I know. Uh huh. Their mom, mom is still alive. She's 94 years old. I know. I think um, I remember you telling me that she would get in her car and drive up and down the highway, like keeping an eye out for him. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. She does. So their dad died in 85 and Susie is the youngest. Oh, there's five of them. Sorry. Oh, okay. Susie's the youngest. And so Larry kind of turned into like a surrogate dad for her. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. So they all grew up in Yakima. She said that the story that I told about Larry taking her for show and tell, that was true. 
<laughs> so cute. So cute. So she, he was seven at the time and she was an infant. She was born like in May and it was like the last week of school. And so he wanted to bring his infant baby sister to school for show and tell. Oh my God. And he went around the classroom and stopped at every single desk and introduced oh his my God. <laughs> to Susie. <laughs> That is the cutest thing I have ever fucking heard. I know. I know. Hi, this is Susie. Hi. This is Susie. Hi. Hi. This is Susie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yep. Everyone gets a turn. So, so cute. Oh my God. She said when she was three, she got a new trike and there was snow on the ground. So Larry chained up her wheels so she could ride in the <laughs> snow. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> so good. Oh my God. Uh, she said then when she was older, she broke down in her Volkswagen on the pass and she called Larry and he was at home. He had a house party going on and he left the party, got himself like a hitch to hitch her car up, drove up to the mountain and got her and lectured her the entire way back about, you know, <laughs> driving in. Proper- and- Proper like uh, wheels, wheel, wheel yeah. equipment to go yeah. over the pass in the winter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She said he got it. She got, uh, he took her car to the mechanic, got it all fixed up. And yeah. Oh my God. So you know, funny. like driving the pass in the winter is no fucking joke, dude. Oh yeah. I just no won't do fucking it. Joke. I know you don't. I know you don't. That's a hard pass for me. <laughs> a, a hard, hard pass. pass. <laughs> but um bump. <laughs> oh my god, I wish I did that on purpose. It's so dorky. It is it is hard to drive the pass. It's hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Susie said that they have lots of hunters in their family, including Larry, whose dad took him hunting for the first time at the age of three. And the Jesus. deal was, I know, the meat was divided equally amongst everybody, regardless of how much they got. So uh-huh. it was just, they just sound so, you know, the way that a family is supposed to be. They took care of each other and all the, all the supplies were sort of communal supplies that they all mm-hmm. shared amongst each other. And that's just mm-hmm. how it was. Mm-hmm. Larry was an excellent carpenter and he started his own company in Yakima called Larry's Construction. Later on in adulthood, he was in a pretty serious accident while he was water skiing, which resulted in a neck injury. Oh. And then do you remember how he had just had a neck surgery at the time that he went missing? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm, yeah. Um, and then he was in another accident not long afterwards while snowmobiling in Oregon. And so because of his neck injuries, he would sometimes have like numbness in his arms and legs. Oh, shit. I know. And this. First of over- all, Larry sounds like an adrenaline junkie. Jesus. Like Uh water skiing and snowmobiling. Like he's really getting out there doing the things. He really, he is doing the things. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, poor Larry. Yeah. He just sounds like super active doing carpentry and hunting and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So mom and stepdad lived on a farm with several acres in Yakima. And when Larry's stepdad passed away, mom was out on that big piece of land by herself. So Larry moved her into town and he went and stayed out on the farm. Okay. But then he hooked up with this new woman that he decided to move in with her. And that took him back into Yakima proper. And this new girlfriend had a friend she recommended to Larry as being a possible tenant. Oh, so that's how this you. all happened. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So now it's Christmas of 2009 when Larry goes missing. So On the 23rd of December, Susie talked to Larry on the phone. So Susie lives on this side of the hard pass. She worked at (laughs) Boeing, (laughs) at Boeing field at the time. Oh, up North in Everett. Uh, Yes. I think she was saying like Boeing field proper, like. Oh, um, down South. Down South. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Yep. 
Yeah. And she was living in the Snohomish area. So she had like an hour commute. So she talked to Larry for her entire drive home on the 23rd. And she asked him what his Christmas plans were. And he told her that since his children were going to Oregon to be with their mom that year, he just planned on spending Christmas at home with his girlfriend. How old was Larry in 2009? I want to say he was in his fifties. Was he in his fifties? Late fifties, yeah. Were his kids and his kids were all grown then, right? They were all adults. Mm -hmm. I remember. I feel like you said he had also become a grandpa by then. No, he he has since had grandchildren that he has never met. Got you. Got you. Right before he went missing, one of his children got married. Got you. That's what it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, we're just going to chill at home for Christmas. My kids are with their mom. But it was a tradition for the Susie and like their immediate family, Susie and Larry and mom to get together the day after on the 26th. And so they sort of finalized plans for this 26th dinner while she was on the phone with Larry. And they were going to have dinner at their mom's house in Yakima. And she said, they decided to keep it real simple and just do a spaghetti dinner and everybody could bring something. And apparently Larry made the absolute best peach pie ever. And so he was assigned to peach pie. I love a good peach pie. I love a peach pie. Right? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Oh, man. Because then you like that whole peaches and cream vibe. Yes. Mm, Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. You know what's funny? Because I was literally thinking about the peach pie I used to make back in the day and how I haven't made a peach pie in like a really long time. And I was kind of craving peach pie recently. And I mean, where did that come from? Like so out of the blue, right? Like anyway, you just, yeah. Whoa. I might have to make a peach pie. I might. Sounds I, I like see, you do. I see a peach pie in my future. That's all I'm saying. I do Thanks, too. Larry. I hope, Thank you, I hope Larry. I see one in my future. I'm going to see you this weekend. <laughs> Are you bringing peach pie or like? Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay. So on the 26th, Susan gets into Yakima and she called Larry's cell phone several times and wasn't able to reach him. And so finally at seven o'clock when dinner was ready and she still hadn't heard from Larry, she called his landline and the girlfriend answered and said that Larry wasn't home and that he had left the day before to go to Seattle. Okay, so this is the day he's supposed to be at his mom's house. Yes, this is the 26th. This is 26th. Yep, it is dinner time. He's supposed boxing to have day, the peach pie. As they call it in other places in the world. Like fighting or like boxes? I think like boxes. I think that's, I, I think, I don't know the etymology of boxing day, but that's what they call it. And it's actually a lot of cultures celebrate, like they have a whole thing that's just about the, the day after Christmas. Oh, interesting. Like Canada okay. and like Australia, I think it's very Brit-ish inspired, I believe. Brit-ish. Brit-ish. <laughs> Brit- Boxing. Brit-ish. Look, look, no, I I'm love having, it. look, I'm struggling this week. I'm trying, sister. I'm trying. Anyway, so she calls, she gets the girlfriend. Girlfriend mm-hmm. says, no, he went to Seattle yesterday on Christmas yeah. Day. Right. And when Susie is literally on her way the next day to his side of the mountains for family Christmas. She's like, that doesn't make any sense. No, no, it makes no sense. No. Yeah. So the girlfriend said, I'm sorry, you're probably going to tell me. I was going to be like, did the girlfriend say why he was driving to Seattle on Christmas day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Girlfriend said that Larry was depressed and having financial troubles. And so he took a bunch of his jewelry and he planned on using it to play poker and he drove to Seattle or the other side of the mountains for that. When there's got to be casinos on the Yakima fucking reservation, right? There's got to be casinos out there. I'm almost positive there are. Yeah. It, it didn't make any sense at all. And like on Christmas, like what are we doing? Right? Yeah. So not only that, but Larry had just undergone a fusion procedure on his neck and he was able to drive like around town. But Susie was like, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have made the trip all the way to Seattle like that. No, those are like hardcore. Like you have to be really careful when you do a fusion procedure because (sighs) I actually have a friend who's just had one and it's like, you have to basically like not move your neck for like a long period, like a long time. And then when you do start finally moving around some, you still have to be like really careful because that takes a really long time to heal. Oh yeah. God. That sounds very painful. No, it's no joke. It's like, a, no. it's like a, no, that's like a big deal surgery. 
Mm -hmm. And even still, I imagine he probably was on sort of pain meds or something where he driving probably was not a great idea. Ill-advised. Yeah. Yeah. So Susie stayed in Yakima until Monday, the 28th. And on the 28th, before heading back to Seattle, she went over to Larry and the girlfriend's house because she still hadn't heard from him. And she said that, so she goes inside and again, girlfriend is telling her that he packed up his jewelry and headed to Seattle to make some money. She said he was depressed because nobody called him on Christmas, right? And Susie was like, that's not true. Not only did Susie and her siblings talk to Larry pretty regularly, but the whole family had a dinner plan like that following day, right? Right. Yeah. And, and I she said- I you told me that when we covered this before- that he called his mom and thanked her for the sweatpants that she bought him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Susan said that that did happen. And she was like, it's just kind of cute and funny. Like, oh, sweatpants. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So Susan said that while she was at the house trying to get answers from the girlfriend, that the girlfriend was obviously hiding something. She was like really fidgety and doing a lot of nervous laughing and like adjusting her position a lot while she was seated on the couch, you know, just sketchy. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. She also said that while she was sitting in the house, Larry's dog sat right at her feet and stared at her. At Susie's feet. Yeah. Oh. Animals. No, man. Animals yeah, have do. instincts. Yeah. Yeah. So Susie was there for about two and a half hours. And when she left, she called her husband from the driveway and just started sobbing. And she said, something is Something's very, very really wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Susie. Mm -hmm. Oh, my so God. She, I know. So she drove back to the other side of the mountains that day, made multiple phone calls to Larry's cell phone, but they all went to voicemail. <sighs> yeah. So one of the siblings has a New Year's birthday and Larry always calls to wish her a happy birthday. In fact, he always brags that he was the first one to call every year. Like right. it was a race. Uh-huh. Right. And <laughs> when the sister didn't get a call, it just further confirmed that something was really wrong. Larry is a way better sibling than I am because half the time I forget <laughs> both of your birthdays. <laughs> All right. It's all right. And it's like, it's, you know, I know that you guys know it's like, it has nothing to do with you. Like I am just a fucking, when it comes to birthdays, man, I suck at birthdays. It's okay. I, suck I mean, at it. after a certain age, it's like, I know, I, mean, I know, what, I know. Like, what I are we doing? This is, this is just me like feeling guilty for a minute because Larry's okay. obviously a better sibling than I am. And I love that for him. <laughs> and I, I love that for his siblings, but <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to make it all about me today. It's fine. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. It's about you and Larry. It's about me and um, Larry and Susie. God, what a gem of a human. I really oh, yeah. enjoyed talking to her. Yeah. Yeah. No, you have a connection tangentially to Susie and them, right? Tangentially. <laughs> Susie's husband is my old friend's dad. Gotcha. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Yes. I knew that you're, it was a friend of yours that had turned you on to Larry's story. So correct. Yeah. Got yeah. it. So the following week after the birthday, still no Larry and Susan's son had a concert in Redmond. So mom came over with Susie's childhood friend from third grade. I love this. Oh, the small town. Yes. The bestie driving mom over to see her grandson's concert. I love That's it. So sweet. Mm -hmm. But she could tell that her mom, like she just had so much worry on her face, right? So she pulled her friend aside and the two decided that they were just going to start like their own investigation and start making phone calls, right? So at this point, no one had informed authorities yet that Larry was missing. I think one of the sisters had, we'll get to that. One of the sisters okay. had made contact with Yakima PD. And I think it was basically like, he's an adult and he can wander off if he wants to kind of oh, typical thing. God. Fucking yeah. sick. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they get a phone number of Larry's friend, Ray. And Ray was a guy that Larry bought his car from that hit like his primary vehicle that he drove around in. And they find out from Ray that he came home one day and the car that he sold Larry was just parked in front of his house and the keys were under his mat. What? Like somebody just like returned this car. 
But it's also the car that the girlfriend is saying that he went to Seattle in. Right. Mm hmm. Like okay. there was no anyway. Okay. Okay. So then she talks to Larry's adult children and they say that they haven't been able to reach him either. And Larry's son even said that he felt like the girlfriend had something to do with why he couldn't get a hold of his dad. Yep. Yep. So then Susan and her siblings go to Yakima PD to file a missing persons report. So her sister Candy goes to Yakima PD to file this report, but they tell her that there was a report that was just filed the week before, which was the first week of January. And it was a DV report against Larry that the girlfriend filed a domestic violence report. What? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So the police say he isn't missing. He's probably hiding because there's these potential assault charges that are going to be brought against him. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, this doesn't make any kind of sense because this is, well, one, Larry is not violent. He's never been violent. And also this alleged assault took place after he was already missing. Right. Right. Mm hmm. Now, um, was this alleged assault charge filed before or after the first time they tried to file the missing persons report? I think before. I don't know that a report was actually filed before then or if one of the siblings just tried to get some sort of help and was sort of dismissed. I don't, okay. you know what I mean? <clears throat> but there would still be record of that phone call. There should be, yeah. Oh my gosh, right? that reminds me of the the paper mill. Yes. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. There should be record of a phone call from whichever sibling called initially. And I would be really curious to know if that, if that record existed when that was in relation to when that domestic violence, like complaint. Or oh was yeah. Filed. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Because if they so, were already trying to report him missing and then she went in and filed this complaint, Right. Then that would make her complaint more suspect. Absolutely. I, it's suspect to me anyway, because. Oh, no, it is. Of course. I'm thinking about it from like the let's follow the mm-hmm. the trail of evidence here, like from yeah. the, because I'm an FBI profiler. So I'm thinking <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're doing so good. Thanks. So Sorry, keep going. No, okay. So Susie has a friend who works in like the criminal law and justice arena. And so she reaches out to her to see if she could help figure out what this assault allegation is, right? Yeah. So first, this friend checks all of the local jail rosters and local hospitals, and Larry isn't in any of those. So she reaches out to another friend who is a 911 dispatcher, and she learns that a 911 call was never made regarding an assault, but that the girlfriend walked into the police station by herself to report this assault, but Larry was never seen and he never spoke to any law enforcement at all. Right. It was just her saying, Hey, this happened. Right. Mm -hmm. So Susie is able to get on the phone with the officer that took this report. And she tells the officer that their mom was the last person to speak to Larry. And that was on Christmas day when he called to thank her for the gift. Right. And that this assault that happened, you know, the following week didn't happen. And so the officer tells Susie to come over to Yakima and, and come into the station and file a proper report. Okay. Oh, you got to come into the station and file a report. It's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this was on a Sunday and Susan's husband drives her to Yakima and they go straight to the PD. And Susan said that because it was Sunday, there wasn't anyone there. And she's like knocking on the back door. What? The police department doesn't work on Sundays in Yakima. It's not like Yakima is like the middle. Yakima is a big fucking town. Mm -hmm. With a lot of shit going on. Also, that's like the coroner not available. Right. What what was it like? Oh, we'll we'll get to that on Monday. Yeah. Right. No, that was one. That was one of the ones you covered where it was like she tried to file. It was like the mom tried to file a missing person report on her daughter. And they're like, the detective will be in on Monday. Yes. That. Yep. That's happened here again. Yep. So. um, Oh, my God. mm -hmm. I'm like, I could flip a fucking table right now. Mm. 
Well, not the one that your mic is on, because that. No, uh, no, no, no. I can't actually flip that. It's too heavy. But oh, you're so strong, though. You can do it. <laughs> you're basically strong. the Hulk. <laughs> so they stay overnight in Yakima, and the following day on Monday, the detective meets Susie at the girlfriend's house. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, at the girlfriend's house, and this really what? catches the girlfriend off guard. Okay. She's not fucking happy. Good. But she still says that he did go over to Seattle on Christmas Day for poker and money. And then he came back and they got in a fight and then he left again. Mm-hmm. And she says he always does this. He just disappears. And Susan's telling the detective, like, no, he never does this. He doesn't no. just disappear. I talk to my brother all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. All the yeah. time. I call him on my way home from work. He, he keeps me company while I'm commuting. Like we talk uh-huh. all the fucking time. Right. And to this detective's credit, what he finally does is he looks at the girlfriend and he says, it sounds like he maybe disappears on you, but not on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. I mean, I don't want to throw a cop a bone ever, you know, ever. But that was, that's a yeah. singer. I got it. <laughs> that is a singer. <laughs> yeah. So then she starts throwing out some other stories that don't make sense. First, he went to Idaho for alcohol treatment. Then he went to Wyoming to go hunting. This guy's just crisscrossing the Western United States. Just yeah. She- joyriding around. Yeah, I'm doing a little hunting, a little treatment, a little poker. Like, he's just going to dabble in everything. Okay. Yeah. So, it's at this vehicle In the vehicle that is now sitting in front of his friend's house. Right. Right. Did we tell... Did did Susie tell the cops about this? Yeah. And and it's like, also, I believe it's still, like, wintertime. We're not just, like, beep bopping around everywhere. Right. You know? It's January in In Eastern Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's at this time that Susie takes two weeks off of work and stays in Yakima and starts trying to investigate what is going on because the police aren't being super helpful. So she talks to this tenant on the farm, this guy that is friends with the girlfriend, and he backs up everything the girlfriend says. And he says that Larry was abusive, et cetera, et cetera. Like, Mm -hmm, no. mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So Yakima, I had to look at a big map and I guess I just didn't know as much about Yakima as I guess I should, but it has a total of 55 irrigation canals feeding in and out of the Yakima river. Mm -hmm. And there's a super large canal near Toppenish in the lower Yakima Valley. That's about 20 miles long. And I think it, the Yakima river feeds into it and then it feeds out into the Columbia But there's large like underwater grates to stop debris or whatever from feeding into the river. Mm -hmm. And Susie said like while she was there for that two weeks and investigating, she says she very clearly remembers like standing on the banks of that canal and believing in her heart that Larry was in there. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Then in March, Susan is at her desk at work when she gets a call from a detective. And the first thing this detective said was, I believe you. Oh, I think Larry is dead. And I think that she did it. Oh, yeah. So the girlfriend is still refusing to talk to the police, which is yeah. like, OK, mm-hmm. like, uh, all yeah. right. That. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And it wasn't until four years after Larry's disappearance that they finally got a search warrant for the girlfriend in Larry's house. And they don't find anything, obviously, oh, because I'm shocked. It's been I'm so, four I, what, I, uh-huh. And they found nothing out of the ordinary. Four years later? <laughs> no. Right? I, yeah, exactly. Everything looks like <laughs> how like I've decided. We here, yep. looks. Yeah. When it was, uh-huh. I was, when I was here for dinner last night, everything. Everything. Totally- yeah. In order I know here. I know this place. I know what's what. Yeah. She said that um she still four lives there. Years? And she, four years. Like what the fuck took so long? I don't know. I don't know. They just what are they really... gonna find four years? I'm sorry. I am They're not gonna find anything four no. years later. 
Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Susie, I'm so sorry, Susan. I I know. This is I just... know. It's just yeah. It it when will they understand that the family knows their people better than right? you do? If I am telling you they are missing, you don't get to tell me that they chose to do this or that. You don't know them. I'm telling you that they wouldn't do that. It reminds me of Mary Santina when they were like, she has deficits. She doesn't know how to navigate the city. She's in danger. Something's wrong. She is missing. Right. We need to find her because something bad is going to happen or has happened to her. Yeah. And they're not and listening. They're like, oh, well, she's an adult. Like, no, she... I can't. Are you aren't you supposed to protect adults too? Yeah, like Larry had neck surgery. He can't drive, and also his car got returned. He doesn't, you know, like right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. So this canal is filled with all kinds of nasty silt and stuff from runoff, and there are portions of the canal that may go as deep as ten feet, and then other parts that you can stand in. Right. And like I said, there's underwater grates that like catch this silt before it goes out to the Columbia. Mm -hmm. There have been bodies discovered in this canal before. And Susie said it's basically like a dumping ground for all kinds of nasty things. Like people toss their like deceased pets in there and stuff. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. But this canal is on tribal land, Yakima nation land. And so you're not allowed to just go in there and start looking Okay. You have to first get permission from the elders. And Susan said that she has asked Yakima PD for permission. And according to them, it wasn't granted by the elders. I just really. Right. It reminds me again. God, why is this reminding me of the Mary Santina case again? Remember when the cops were like, well, we can't just go. You can't just go look at the footage. We need to get a warrant and blah, blah, blah. of Like the video footage at the the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. And then like grandma called the apartment complex and they were like, sure, come look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know. Are we we sure? So we're just trusting the police that they did what you asked. I I just. Mm hmm. No, I don't. Tr- I don't trust the police at all. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't want to get off on a tangent, but you heard about the bodies they found in Jacksonville, right? I didn't. Oh, you didn't hear about that? No. Well, I'll. We'll put a pin in it. But at the end of this episode, remind me to tell you about it. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll do it on air, guys. You'll get to hear it too. Oh, great. Okay. So Susie also has a friend who volunteers in search and rescue. Susie's got friends in all kinds of really cool spots that are yeah. helping her out here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we need Susie to be our friend in case we need those resources. <laughs> I know. Where, where's your friend with the cadaver dog? I have a situation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So on two different occasions, the friend came out with cadaver dogs. They were brought to the canal along the edge and the dogs didn't alert on anything but again they weren't allowed to put a boat in the water without permission right so that's that's as much as they were able to do very recently the yakima pd has established a cold case unit and larry's case is one of them on the list she said that it's really hard to be at her mom's house because her mom does in fact sing to larry's picture every night before bed oh i know Oh, yeah, man. I know. And she, you know, Susie said, I never thought in a million years that this would be the reality in my family. No, of no. course not. I can't imagine. No, I can't imagine. This is the worst case scenario, too. Like, just no answers. No answers. And God, I was thinking about this, too, after I talked to her is like, I know, like, for me, like not being like super religious, you know, your body is your body, whatever, but it still feels like so awful and disrespectful to not be able to retrieve your loved one's body. Like they were just thrown out like garbage. Like it does matter. It does matter. It does matter. (sighs) Yeah. Yep. Larry... I told her too, when I was on the phone with her, I was like, when I was pulling up pictures for the case, like he just looked so kind, you know, and she's Mm -hmm. like, he was really kind. And he just looks like the neighborhood dad that would like 
help you with your bike. You know what I mean? He yes. just, he just is, looks so kind and yeah, he, he was, but that's Larry. Oh, sister. <sighs> that's brutal. Well, I, you know, I hope this cold case unit finds something, gets somewhere. Mm-hmm. Maybe they try again to see if they can go search the river. Although at this point, how long will he have been down there? 14, 14 years. years, 15 years. Yeah. God. I know. I feel like though, the good news is uh, that's why I was asking her about the feed into the Columbia because it's like, forget about it. But if there really are those sort of catch grates or whatever. Yeah. Maybe that will have contained something, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my heart goes out to them, to Larry's family, to his siblings, to his mom. Oh God. That's just too. I can't imagine. I cannot. I can't imagine. I I cannot imagine. And mom is 95. Like I, she deserves (sighs) to be able to put her son to rest before she passes. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. <sighs> oh, well, thank you for that, sister. You're thank welcome. you for um, you know, thank you, Susan, for you know, reaching out and giving us more info about your lovely brother. That's just yeah. mm-hmm. really love to love knowing more about Larry. Yeah. I enjoyed getting to know Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't have a lot of faith in cops. There was a story that came out a few weeks ago that is not getting a lot of national press, which is really upsetting. And it was basically this mom down in like uh, just outside of Jacksonville, Mississippi. She had her son had gone missing mm-hmm. and he had like left the house to go to like the 7-Eleven or something like that, the convenience store or whatever. And just never came back. And Mm -hmm. so she filed the missing person report and she was like, just, you know, dog with a bone, wouldn't let it go. Right. She was just Mm -hmm. adamant. She was going to find her son and like seven, eight months goes by. And finally it comes out and I don't have the details on how this happened, but it finally comes out because I, maybe because she just would not leave them alone and they couldn't deal with it anymore. I'm not sure. But what, what they, what she discovered was, (sighs) He'd been hit by a police cruiser. What? And the police officers buried him in a grave marked with just nothing but like a stick with a number on it out behind the jail. And when people went looking, they found it started out at like 217 and it is now over 600 graves behind this jail of bodies that were never returned to loved ones that were buried there by the police department. No. Yes. Uh, Are they, is it a mix between inmates and uh, and uh, that is unclear, oh, but like, it what? looks like the vast majority of them were not inmates. Many of them were buried maybe by inmates even, but they oh were not God. buried, but they were mostly not inmates. And they all just had a number to mark their grave. No other marking. They were called like, they call it like a pauper's grave. Oh my God. And it's like, a, I guess a lot of these bodies were basically like, unclaimed but like the families were never informed that these people were dead to in order for them to be claimed they're just missing and yes oh my god oh my god and we don't know yet how many of them are the result of um murder by cop but it is a department this is hundreds over 600. This is a, this is a department doing this, not like a rogue bad apple. Oh my God. I, you probably don't know because details are still coming out. So obviously the one boy was hit and killed by the cops, but are others just like bodies that they happened upon and they didn't want to investigate? So they just scooped it up and took it. Like, where are they coming from? At this point, I'm going to say like D 
all of the above, right? Oh my God. Killed by cops, found by cops. Who knows? That's awful. Yes. And you gotta know that this jail outside of Jacksonville is cannot be the only place that this has fucking happened. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I mean, at this point, I'm like, we should be searching out behind every jail right now. God. Oh, that's disgusting. That's it's, disgusting it's, and it's heartbreaking. It's a horror show. It is a horror show. Wow. Yes. Wow. So <sighs> well, there's a that. little, I guess, bonus episode for everyone in the Chaos Kids Club. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Susie, for carving Thank out you, time. Susie. Yes. Appreciate you and um, condolences. And my heart is with you and your family and your mom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sister, that was mm. fucking chaotic. It was chaotic. Love you. Um, I love you too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. by 8th Direction Records. Artwork by Joshua M. Davis. Music by Paul Abner. If you would like to support the show, you can visit our Patreon page at crime, wine, and chaos forward slash Patreon. Cheers. Oh, you're getting a little warm up in there, huh?